All right, for this video, I wanna go through a sample Florida Business Tax Application Form, DR1. So this is a form filed by businesses in Florida that need to collect, remit, and pay certain types of taxes in Florida. So the application is submitted with the Florida Department of Revenue. And so we're gonna go through the application step-by-step step based on the fact pattern we have here. So I've got the full application, it's 15 pages, so we'll cover all these sections. And then I do have one slide here covering a little bit of background on this form and then more detail on the fact pattern. So the DR1 is gonna be filed by new businesses or it can be existing businesses that have to register to collect, report, and pay various types of Florida taxes and surcharges. Now there's a lot of different types that would apply here, but the two most common for most businesses are the sales and use tax and then the reemployment tax. So if you're selling products or services that are ta uh, taxable, so sales tax in Florida, you need the sales and use tax filings. And then if you have employees, you need to report those wages and pay the state unemployment tax, which is now called the, the reemployment tax. Now the DR1 can be filed online or you can submit a paper application. Online is generally easier, uh, but in this example, we're gonna be using the paper return. Now with the filing, you're also encouraged to sign up for electronic filing of the various returns and payment of those taxes. So you can sign up to file online your sales and use tax returns. You could pay the taxes online as well. Much easier than going through the paper form route. All right, so let's look at the fact pattern here and then we'll get into the, the return pages. So in our fact pattern here, we have John Q. Taxpayer. He wants to open a food truck business in Sarasota and he's gonna be the 100% owner and the only employee for the time being. So John forms a Florida LLC on February 9th, 2024, and he makes an S-Corp election via the 2553 filed with the IRS for the entity to be taxed as an S-Corp for federal income tax purposes. Now he anticipates that the, the truck is gonna be open for business on March 1st, and he's gonna be the only employee uh, running the company for the foreseeable future, right? So he's gonna be doing all of it himself. John prepares and files the DR1, and so after it's filed, he's gonna get his certificate of registration. He'll get his Florida resale certificate for sales tax, so he can go ahead and uh, pay for inventory and things like that without having to uh, be pay, uh, charged to the sales tax. And he's also gonna get an RT account number, so this is the reemployment tax number that he needs to file his reemployment returns. All right, so let's have a look at the application. So page one, starting off, you need to have a EIN, so the Federal Employer Identification Number for the business. So the EIN should be listed at the top on section one. Now, if for some reason you don't have a legal entity or you don't need an EIN, you can use your SSN if you're a US citizen. Uh, if you're a non-resident and don't have either, you might have a visa number, but most businesses are gonna have a legal entity and an EIN assigned to that entity, so you would use the EIN at the top. Now, reason for applying, you see here that there's a variety of options. Most cases, it's gonna be the very first one, right? So this is a business entity that's not currently registered, and so we've estimated that our first uh, Florida taxable activity that's gonna happen is on March 1st, 2024. Okay, now item three for the business name, location, and address, We've got the legal entity name, so the name of the LLC that was filed with the state of Florida. And if you have a DBA, right, of doing business as, you can list, list that there. If not, then you can leave that blank. Now the physical address, a mailing address, so you do wanna put down the physical uh, location of the business, indicate the county that you're gonna be operating in, and then provide telephone and fax number uh, fax number is optional, right? A lot of companies don't have fax, but you want at a minimum to have uh, a telephone contact number. Mailing address, if it's different, go ahead and populate the mailing address, but uh, you can indicate, you know, we want correspondence address to John Q. Taxpayer, and the mailing address is gonna be the same. Now, question four asks about seasonal business. So if this is a company that's not gonna be operating all year, and you determine you're a seasonable uh, business, you have some different rules for certain tax collections. So for example, if you are a seasonal business and you're thus a seasonal employer, you, the rate at which you have to file those reemployment tax returns is different. 
Uh, but in our case, no, we're in Florida, the weather's great, he's gonna be open year round, so we are not a seasonal business. Question five, the form of business ownership. So check whichever one is most closely describes what you have set up. In our case here, we have a limited liability company. It is a single member LLC, right? We only have one owner. And the next question, if it's a single member LLC, select a box that uh, describes how the LLC is taxed for federal income tax purposes. And so we've checked S corporation because we filed an S corporation election. Okay, so question six, if our business is a partnership corp, LLC or trust, provide the following info. So the date the entity was organized under state law is February 9th, 2024. And the business is gonna operate on a calendar year. So the last month or a fiscal year ending date is gonna be December 31st each year. Now, if you see items here that don't apply because uh, your business is structured in a different way, then you can leave the information blank, right? So this section, question seven, is for sole proprietors. We're not a sole proprietorship, right? We're an LLC, tax as an S-corp. We are not a partnership, so we leave question eight blank. Uh, question nine asks if our business is a corp, LLC, or trust, provide this information. Well, this is us, right? We're a limited liability company, so we have uh, John is the managing member of the LLC, his name, address, contact number, and then the last four digits of his social security number. All right, so question 10 on background. So has the business ever been known as a, by another name? No, this is a, a brand new entity. It hasn't had any name changes. So those are no's for us. Question 11, the business activities. So this is where we, uh, you, we want to most closely describe what kind of business you're engaged in using the correct NI, a, uh, NAICS code. So you can go to the census.gov website, look up various businesses and find the code that most accurately describes what it is you're doing. In the next section, we want to describe briefly here uh, the primary nature of our business. What are we selling? So primary nature and purpose is to operate a food truck located in Sarasota County, Florida. The truck will sell sandwiches, tacos, hot dogs, soda drinks, and some bottled water. All right, pretty straightforward. Question 12 is blank because we haven't had any change in form of business ownership, and this wasn't a, an acquisition of an existing business. So this is a brand new entity set up, no changes in ownership, so we leave section 12 blank. Now question 13 gets into the sales and use tax uh, questions. So this is where uh, we and, and the state will determine you know, what it is that we need to be filing from for sales and use tax purposes. So the item that most closely resembles what we're doing here is this checkbox. So we're gonna sell, serve, or prepare food products or drinks for immediate consumption on the premises, or that we're gonna package up uh, for takeout to-go orders from a temporary or permanent location, right? That, mo that most closely describes what it is that we're doing. Now we're not in the business of property rentals or leases, so those are blank. We're not a real property contractor. We're not engaged in any of these kinds of services, right? Detective protection, no, none of that applies. We're not selling any fuels. We're not buying secondhand goods or scrap metal. We're not operating any coin operated machines. Uh, we're not doing, we're not in the vending machine business either. So at the very end here, uh, we indicate how we wanna register and get what kind of resale certificate. So most businesses are gonna check box one. Right? We are purchasing items to use in our business without paying Florida sales tax to the seller at the time of purchase. Right? So uh, item one is gonna apply. Now items two and three, these direct pay permits, these would apply for, m most businesses aren't gonna have this issue. If you're in business where you're buying a lot of stuff and at the time you bought it, you're unsure whether or not sales tax needs to be levied because you might use it to actually sell to a customer or you might keep it internally. This often happens with very large manufacturing companies. Uh, then you might need a direct pay permit in addition to the resale certificate. But in this case, we just want item one, right? We know, we know that we're gonna be buying inventory and we're ultimately gonna be selling all of it uh, to our customers. We're not keeping it internally. We're not reworking it. Uh, so item one is uh, the selection we need to make. Now question 14, 
Uh, so these are various other types of business sectors that you might be in, but you'll notice here that none of this applies to us, right? So we're not selling prepaid phones. Um, we're not selling tires. We're not selling uh, remanufactured lead acid batteries. So all of these are no's. We're not in the dry cleaning business. We do have to uh, pay attention to the reemployment tax section. Okay, so reemployment tax, this is our state unemployment tax. So uh, as a note here, as a reminder, right, for purposes of reemployment tax, employees include the officers of a corp and members of an LLC uh, classified as a corporation for federal tax purposes, right? Now, we're not classified as a corp, but uh, what they want to make clear there is that if you're uh, an owner, and you're actively engaged in that business, you're likely an employee, and so you need to be uh, paying these reemployment taxes. We know we have to do it, right? We're a single shareholder S Corp, so uh, John's going to have to file and pay the reemployment tax. So, question 19 Do you have or will you have employees in Florida? Yes. Do you or will you lease workers from an employee leasing company? So, if you are going to go to a, a third-party company to lease employees uh, from that organization, then check yes and enter that leasing company. In our case, no, right? This is just going to be John, and when he does decide to hire somebody, he likely he anticipates he's not going to go through a leasing company. Okay, so question 21. Do you use the services of persons in Florida whom you consider to be self-employed independent contractors other than those engaged in distinct business occupation or profession? Uh, the answer is no, right? So what they're getting at here is they're asking, are you hiring somebody that you're just calling self-employed, but they really are an employee? Th that's what they're trying to get at there. And this is because uh, there's a lot of controversy around companies treating employees as independent contractors to try to avoid things like the reemployment tax uh, avoid payroll tax withholding, all of that kind of stuff. But in this case, that's not going to apply uh, to us for this business, so we've answered no. If you've answered no to questions 19, 20, and 21, you can skip to the communications tax section. Uh, we did answer yes to question 19, so we're going to have to uh, finish these questions, right? So is our business currently registered for reemployment tax? Uh, the answer is no, right? Now, if you're already registered, uh, then you can provide the RT account number, but the answer is no, right? We're not registered yet. We, we're filing this to get registered. So no for question 22, not currently reporting any wages, and no, we're not uh, filing to reactivate an employment account. On what date did you or will you first have an employee in Florida? We're anticipating that start date on May, uh, March 1st, 2024. Now in the employment type, uh, most companies are just gonna be regular employers. Uh, but you notice there's some other options here, right? So if you're a nonprofit organization, so you're, you're filing Form 990s uh, as a nonprofit, it's different from a regular employer, governmental entities, agricultural companies, domestic employer is uh, a reference to, you know, do you have somebody working in your house that's performing household services, right? So maid, cook, uh, you know, somebody who maintains the garden, whatever it might be. Uh, okay, so regular employer for us, question number 25. This applies to regular employers, Indian tribe, tribal units, or governments. So have you or will you pay gross wages of at least 1500 within a calendar quarter? And we anticipate yes. And the date that we're gonna reach that $1,500 amount is the end, of the, uh, the end of month, right? So all of March, John's gonna work. His wages are gonna exceed that $1,500 amount by the end of the month, that's fine. All right. Now, have you or will you have one or more employees for a day during 20 or more weeks in the calendar year? And the answer is yes. Right. So we anticipate, um, you know, that we're going to have those employees. Yeah, we anticipate we'll be in business year round. Right. Uh, so nonprofits don't apply. Domestic employer doesn't apply to us. Agricultural employer doesn't apply. List all the Florida locations where we're going to have those employees. So list the that street location where we're going to be operating the business. Uh, principal product is going to be food sales, number of employees, one. Okay, so payroll agent information. So if we're going to be using a third-party payroll agent to maintain our payroll books and perhaps submit the returns for us, you can enter that information down here. Sometimes you know, if you're using your accountant or CPA to do it for you. You might list the information there. Not in our case. John's just going to do it himself. 
Now the mailing address information for the reemployment tax. So uh, for reporting forms and information, we want any kind of correspondence to just be mailed to the address in the first section. So our business, our business address. So you notice here how you can indicate uh, if you want information mailed to a different third party or another address, you can indicate as such. But in our case, we just want all three of these items uh, to just send to our business address. So we're not sending it to a payroll agent. We're not sending it to another person. All right, communication service tax. So uh, do we sell communication services? No. So we're, we're going to answer no for that. So most of these will be no because we're not in this sector. So we're not applying uh, for direct pay permit for communication service taxes. None of these apply. So those are all blank. Documentary stamp tax. So do you enter into written obligations to pay money with customers at this location that are not recorded with the clerk of court? Uh, no, right? So we're not in this type of business. <laughs> so no for us. And uh, we can leave that next section blank. Gross receipts tax on electrical power and gas, right? So we're not uh, owning or operating electrical or, na or natural or manufactured gas utility distribution. So that's a no. Uh, the second question is also a no. Severance taxes and Miami-Dade County Lake Belt fees. So again, these are all no for us, right? But depending on your business, maybe they might apply, but we're gonna go with no. Now this section really important, right? Uh, enrollment to file and pay electronically. So uh, I would highly recommend doing this, right? Because it's gonna be easier to just file stuff online, set up your bank account, pay it online, rather than mail in the paper form. So what we wanna do, question 38, John has decided we wanna enroll for both the filing of the returns and paying tax electronically. And our payment method, we're using the ACH debit method, so we want uh, the state to just withdraw the money from our bank account when we authorize it. So we enter our contact details here. So John Taxpayer, the mailing address, and put his uh, email address, telephone and fax number, and he's indicated here that he is going to be a company employee. Now, the, uh, the contact person for electronic filing, if it's different than that person above, then go ahead and enter new information. But in our case, it's the same person. In the banking information, so input your uh, company bank account details if you want that direct debit. So bank name, account number, routing number, and then the type of the account. So it's a business checking account. And then you have to authorize the enrollment here, right? So print your name, title, date, and signature. Authorizing email communication. So John is on board with that, right? So whatever has to be sent by paper, that's fine, but also get stuff via email as well. So he's authorized the department to send information on this application using the email address he's listed below. Uh, so he's authorized that. And then the final uh, declaration and signature is on this uh, second to last page here. So John Taxpayer, managing member, sign and date, uh, and then go ahead and mail the application to Florida Department of Revenue. Uh, but obviously, if you're submitting this online, you can just put that push that submit button, and then it'll be filed electronically. The very last page of the paper form has uh, some references to other forms that might be required or provide some more information. Uh, and then they've also got contact details if you have any questions. So uh, that covers it for this application. I, I hope that was helpful. Uh, any questions, obviously feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.